Travis James Zipper here with N3 Nutrition and the Nutritional Coaching Institute. Uh, this is my first video, so I'm gonna. My intentions are to create this for nutrition coaches, but I do hope that it expands to the rest of the world. So, starting off, I want to ask you a question. The question is: Do you want to be a mediocre nutrition coach or a great nutrition coach that delivers results with every single client? Let me ask you something else. Have you ever had a client that's come to you with just a laundry list of hormonal problems that you felt unprepared to deal with? Are you someone that has a laundry list of hormonal problems that you don't know what to do? Now, if you're a nutrition coach, does the fact eat at you uh, because you knew that these people that came to you needed your help and that the medical system has just been failing them up until now? If so, then you definitely need to keep listening. Because what I'm going to talk about today are the six main causes behind a large majority of all the hormonal problems today. I'm talking like 85-90%. Again, uh, my name is Travis James Zipper. I am a uh, nutrition coach, a functional nutrition coach with N3 Nutrition. And I also teach the hormone specialist course for the Nutritional Coaching Institute. Have them get as lean of meat as possible. If they're doing eggs, uh, the, the egg quality is questionable, have them do egg whites. If they're doing chicken, chicken breast, not chicken thighs. If they're doing steak, flank steak, or uh, filet with as little marbling in it as possible. By eating a lot of GMO crops, and listen, uh, Monsanto does a great job of covering everything up. Give it five more years, okay, and you're going to start reading about how bad they are. They have now almost kind of, they're banned in, in Europe, they're banned in everywhere else, just not America. Don't have a storage spot for bile. So something you might need to do if you have a higher fatty meal is you include something like ox bile or digestive enzymes, or you make sure that you're adding some digestive support. Still, you might hear that and say, eh, big deal. Who, who is that? Why should you even be talking? Or who am I? Uh, or why should you be listening to anything I have to say? And that's a good question. So since this is my first video, let me share a little bit about myself and some of my qualifications that at least I feel uh, entitle me to even talk on the subject of hormones. Qualifications, uh, basically for over five years, uh, my experiences come from working at a medical weight loss clinic and two separate age management clinics, uh, helping patients do everything from lose weight to balance their hormones after menopause. Now during those times, I've had the pleasure of working under seven different doctors, every one of them being different, gaining practical experience and amassing a wealth of continued education certifications in the functional medicine space. And still, you still might be listening to this and say, uh, why is this important to you? Uh, especially if you're a nutrition coach. And let me get a little specific as to why videos like this should always be something that you're using to improve your craft. Number one, it fits a need. Because as a nutrition coach, you should always be educating yourself on the information that applies to your client database, whether it's athletes, baby boomers, uh, children, whatever it is. Number two, it uncovers a fear. Because as a nutrition coach, you should always wanna help every single client. As you should always believe that you can add some type of value to their life. If you don't, then you're in the wrong job. Number three, it serves as a victory because as a nutrition coach, there's no better feeling in the world than helping uh, the most difficult type of clients of up until, uh, up until now have only seen failure. Getting into the, the six root causes, uh, so hopefully you can help identify and fix some of these hormonal problems with clients yourself, uh, we're gonna move on to number one. Number one, okay, so the root cause number one is mental and emotional stress. You might be seeing that, you're like, oh my gosh, what, what a surprise. No, not really. Uh, it shouldn't be a surprise at all. But there's a little uh, uh, fine line to this, is that one, we cope with large amounts of stress daily, but that doesn't mean that the body necessarily copes with it that well. And when I talk about stress, I'm usually referring to the feeling of being stressed out, chronically overwhelmed, uh, and just not knowing what to do with yourself. Some scary stats, at least with regards to Americans, is that 75% of Americans uh, suffer from moderate to extreme stress. You know, you might hear that and say, well, that's not anything new, I knew that. But did you know that 25% of those, 75% suffer what's uh, considered severe stress, and that 43% of those Americans suffer health effects due to stress? 
43% of America is suffering from health effects due to stress. Take that in, okay? Women unfortunately top the charts in all stress-related stats as they definitely have more physical symptoms than men because just how stress hits them. Sorry, ladies, that's the truth. Now, all the factors uh, of stress can lead down a nasty pathway that can signal stress eating, the inability to lose weight or body fat, uh, extreme fatigue, the slowing down of the metabolism or thyroid function, uh, brain inflammation, which is a, the main cause of brain fog, uh, neuroinflammation in the gut that can lead to depression and anxiety, uh, a non-existent sex drive, and even hormonal conditions such as PCOS, endometriosis, and lastly, a weakened immune system. Now, if anyone has one or many of the above uh, symptoms or conditions, then it makes for a miserable life. So as a nutrition coach, uh, if you have a client that falls into the severely stressed category, then your number one focus should be to help them manage it. And not so much focus on the food and how they're exercising, but stress. Focus on sleep, focus on being in nature, focus on getting some vitamin D in the sun, focus on being with pets and friends. Hormonal root cause number two is gonna be uh, what I call food triggers, okay? And there are three that really fall into this category, which are gonna be food intolerances, blood sugar dysregulation, and lastly, nutrient deficiencies. Starting with uh, blood sugar dysregulation, when a person doesn't eat throughout the day for any reason, okay, and they let their blood sugar drop, the brain essentially needs glucose to survive. So what it does is it sends out this blast to the rest of the body telling it to enter into survival mode and that sugar is the only thing that's gonna cure all their problems. This starts a vicious cycle or a roller coaster of highs and lows of blood sugar um, known as blood sugar dysregulation. So think, when you don't eat and you're starving, what's the first thing you want? You want carbs, you want sugar. That your body is hardwired uh, to do that because it knows it's gonna be the, the first thing that fixes it. Common uh, food triggers, okay, uh, are another common problem that many people blow off uh, and they don't know how to identify because most have been walking around in, like, in an inflamed state for quite some time and they just brush it off as to how things are. Okay, so food intolerance is gonna be the first one. I swapped the first two. Food intolerances usually occur because individuals, they lose the ability to properly digest foods, okay? Such as lactose intolerance. That's a perfect example of it. Second way it can happen is a, a person can develop an autoimmune condition or a response to a food or foods uh, later in life. Gluten is a great example of this. Not everyone is born celiac, but celiac is an autoimmune condition. Third cause of food intolerances is they can come from what's called leaky gut. As leaky gut causes the body to be even more reactive to certain foods that you were not previously reactive to. What happens is your, mu uh, your mucosal lining, uh, which is one cell thick, which separates your small intestine from your uh, bloodstream, is just one cell, like I said, and it's kind of like a screen door. It lets little things in and out that are properly broken down, but it doesn't let big things in. But what happens is when you have leaky gut, uh, holes get poked in that screen door, and it lets things in undigested, and your body sees those as foreign invaders, and it tags them, and it creates an immune response every time it sees that food. So you heal the gut lining, food intolerances can go away. So the biggest food triggers, okay, or food intolerances are usually gluten, dairy, corn, soy, nuts, nightshades, artificial sweeteners, yeast, and lastly, even grains. So if you have a client that is uh, stuck, okay, maybe you wanna try removing all of those foods and slowly reintroducing them one at a time over a three or four day period and see how they feel. Food trigger cause number three is uh, nutrient deficiencies, or let's say C. It's a common notion that Americans are uh, overfed and undernourished. And it's estimated that 80% of the people in the United States are not getting their daily amounts of nutrients needed for even basic health. Now, the term phytonutrient gap is uh, one I want you to remember, as it's a word used to describe the difference between nutrients that you need for optimal health and feeling great, and the nutrients you're actually getting in your diet. 
Now, with the word, like I said, optimal being highly emphasized. The largest nutrient deficiencies in America, okay, are omega-3 fatty acids, iodine, iron, magnesium, vitamin B12, vitamin D, and zinc. Okay, so those are great things to always check for. If you're ever wondering, uh, SpectraCell micronutrient test is the Cadillac of all nutrient testing. If you wanna ever see if you're low in anything, that's the, uh, the test to go to. Moving away from food triggers, the third like hormonal root cause, okay, is gonna be poor gut health, okay? Now, I think everyone knows these days how important that a person's gut or microbiome is to their health. As, uh, as if they don't, you should really start reading up on it. As the microbiome or gut problems can materialize as again, leaky gut or intestinal permeability like I described before. Uh, again, autoimmune conditions, they often start off in the gut and they're usually one of the root causes that's needed for any autoimmune condition to start. So that's one thing you can always work on fixing if you do have any type of autoimmune condition. Number three is dysbiosis uh, or the overgrowth of unfriendly bacteria and loss of healthy bacteria is another issue that can happen uh, with the gut. Now all three of those are uh, problems that can result in one, the body's inabil inability to properly handle stress as 70% of the body's immune system is in the gut lining called the gut associated lymphoid tissue, also known as GALT. It can uh, cause a person to gain weight as there are certain unhealthy bacteria called formicocytes and they extract calories from the foods that you eat and it puts those calories into your fat cells. So if you have an abundance of these uh, bacteria in your gut, you may be storing even more fat than, and even when you're not overeating. Another thing that uh, a messed up microbiome can do is it can make you crave sugar even more, which can feed uh, a bacteria overgrowth, such as candida. It can cause hormonal imbalances, mainly allowing estrogen to recirculate throughout the body. And it can cause anxiety, depression, and brain fog. Those are some really important uh, and powerful things that the gut plays a role in a person's body. So gut health, course is coming okay down the road uh, but the basics are heal it remove inflammatory foods okay uh, find out what foods are triggers to it uh, add some glutamine work on a gut health protocol uh, root cause number four is going to be poor liver detox capabilities okay as your liver is the primary source of detoxification in the body and all of the kidneys and the skin and various other parts of the body also uh, play a role in detoxes. They all have detox cells. The liver is definitely the master and commander. Now, it's the liver that breaks down the toxins and the hormones and then repackages them so that the body can safely excrete them. And if working properly, it can prevent those toxins from being recirculated throughout the body. Estrogen is a perfect example of this. Now, the most important step in uh, uh, detoxification is a process called methylation. Now, methylation facilitates over 200 processes in the body, and over 85% of all methylation takes place in the liver, and without it, the body would definitely crumble. So, all you have to do is love your liver and treat it right so that it can do the same back to you. This can be done by making sure that it has what it needs uh, to get its job done making sure you have all your B vitamins, making sure glutathione numbers are good, making sure that you're uh, not drinking alcohol all the time and you know removing environmental toxins, uh, cleaning up hygiene products. These are all things that can uh, de-stress the liver. Root cause uh, number five is gonna be uh, environmental toxin exposure, okay? This is one that gets brushed underneath the rug and people don't really realize how much uh, of a, uh, an effect it's having on their body. Whether it's mercury in fish, uh, contaminated drinking water or bathing water is another one, polluted indoor air as we spend 90% of our lives indoors, toxic personal care products, uh, or it be one of the 80,000 chemicals in circulation today, they all contribute to what uh, is known as a chemical load that each of us carry around inside our bodies called body burden. 
just think. One little thing's probably not uh, too bad, but if you really go through your day and add up all the exposures you're getting, okay, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy uh, the amount of uh, body burden that you have. Now, these toxins can trigger changes in our cells that, one, uh, increase fat retention and increase cortisol production. They alter insulin production and make us insulin resistant, often leading to prediabetes and diabetes. Uh, they prevent our bodies from clearing out excess estrogens. They compete for receptor spots with estrogen primarily and then thyroid hormones, causing system-wide hormonal imbalances. Uh, so those are just some of the things that environmental toxins do. Uh, and they're such an easy thing to, to remove when controlling the factors that you can't control. Now, you can't control the air that you breathe outside uh, or everything that goes on in your life, but you know, getting a shower filter, getting, uh, drinking filtered water, okay, buying organic produce, uh, those are all big things that can go uh, very far in terms of reducing your, your environmental toxin uh, burden. Lastly, the, um, the final root cause, or root cause like number six, so to speak, is gonna be hidden infections. Now, infections that are acute or chronic will raise levels of inflammation in the body. Uh, and the scary thing is that they frequently get brushed aside as either constipation, fatigue, stress, and are usually um, unexpected when they are discovered and rarely detected these days. I find so many infections on gut tests and people have EBV, which is Epstein-Barr um, infections, uh, or even Lyme disease, okay? All of these things can be such a problem. Okay, now stress can lead to the reactivation of some old infections, such as herpes, uh, the Epstein-Barr, like I just mentioned, and Lyme disease, and lastly, cytomegalovirus. Uh, and all the previous uh, um, infections that I just mentioned have been directly connected to numerous autoimmune diseases, from hypothyroidism, to celiac, to Crohn's. So if any autoimmune condition is present, it's always advised to rule out any possible background infection as it definitely could be contributing to their condition. Now, a good GI test is a great place to start um, or even a viral panel can help rule out many of the above factors and slim down the list of uh, possible causes. That is the uh, six root causes uh, of almost all hormonal problems in the world today. You might be, still be asking, so how does this affect me? Well, this is what I want you to do after listening to this, okay? I want you to sit down and think of that one client, your most difficult client that you've had or, or one that you've seen little to no progress with after working with uh, you for you know however long time and take these previous six main causes and see if any of them stand out. It might be one, uh, it might be all six. Now, even after listening to all of this and hearing me ramble, you might be saying to yourself, Man, testing for some of this stuff is so expensive. Uh, and it's not that expensive, uh, but it does cost money and it's not covered by insurance usually. So I would say yes, but so is your iPhone 10 and your daily Starbucks every day uh, that adds up. And you, many people or even yourself pay for that every day. So if you're a coach or if you're a person that's having these problems, you need to ask them or yourself, what's import more important, your health or your $6 daily Starbucks fix. And I think that statement might make sense to everyone unless your name is Jason Phillips. Okay, a little bit of an inside joke there. Okay, so on top of that, you might also be saying to yourself, uh, I still don't feel comfortable enough or know enough uh, on the topic to approach clients about it. So I tend to avoid it altogether. Uh, and what I have to say to that is that this is where the edu education aspect of coaching always needs to be in play, always. So always think about how can you educate yourself even more. Call to action, okay, or what you should do after watching this little presentation is one, probably watch it again as it covered a lot of information. Two, go out on the web, download a series of questionnaires online uh, with each of these problem areas discussed and have troubled clients fill them out and see if one or more of them sticks out as a possible root cause. Like I said, it could be one, could be all six. Three, lastly, if you like this video, okay, or if you like the content, please leave a comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel as I plan to create many more like this and I wanna know if uh, I can make it any better or if you want me to create certain videos on certain topics. 
or <laughs> one little uh, plug here, if you want to take it up even a notch, then head to the Nutritional Coaching Institute's website uh, and look at some of our specialty courses that can become uh, help you become a master of your craft. Now, Travis James Zipper uh, here again with uh, the Nutritional Coaching Institute and In3Nutrition signing off, and thank you for watching.